what you're doing there? Oh, I'm just going from magnified to red dot. Magnified to red dot. That's what I'm doing. What's up everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at you guys today from Take Aim Training and Range. And today's video is kind of like what you saw in the intro there, going from a magnified optic to an offset 45 degree, whether it be a red dot or even iron sights like what you see here on my AR-10 build. And is it really effective, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and tackle a couple of things really quick because it looks like, and we'll go ahead and just make this announcement now, low power, low powered variable optics are the future. So do things like an ACOG and an offset RMR really still have a place in the modern firearms world? And I'm here to say, oh yeah, it definitely does. So what's the benefit of having a offset 45 degree sight like what you see right here on this guy? Well, the first off is if you already have something that's magnified, but it's non-adjustable, so it's set to whatever power that it's at. For instance, this ACOG here is a four power scope, uh, but you want to engage closer range targets and the ACOG 2 doesn't give you a whole lot of uh, eye relief, right? It's not really forgiving. So if you need to have a quick acquisition and get on target quickly, then canting your rifle slightly and then giving you that red dot makes the world a lot easier and that's for sure. So I am definitely a proponent for a 45 degree sight. So what about LPVOs, right? LPVOs are great because they still give you that magnification, but you can adjust it to uh, one power if you want. Now, granted, some of them aren't really true a true one power. Now, this per se isn't an LPVO, okay? This is a four to 12, but it still acts as one as such. It does have an adjustable magnification. That's all there really is to it. So this is definitely more of a distance gun. Wouldn't really be using this for a CQB or close, you know, sweeping a house or anything. Uh, that's where my Mark 18 or even this AR, the Colt M4 over here would come into play. All right. So I'm definitely a fan and I can go ahead and show you guys a couple of little drills I like to run with the ACOG and the RMR setup. So first off, other thing I want to throw out there, get yourself a quality sling. I do, I am a fan of the Magpul MS sling and that entire line, but there's also the McLean core, which is also a really cool one. It's a single point, but it acts as a two point. We might have a video on that. You'll have to check that out. But anyway, if I did want to go out for distance or I want to have more precise shot, let's say I want to go for Mr. Hand Select there and I'm looking for a particular part on him that I want to engage, I can. and I can effectively, but let's say I need to engage quicker and I need to have that wide field of view. I don't want such a limited eye relief like what I get with this ACOG. I can quickly cant this guy and now I'm pretty much looking over the rifle. I can still see my red dot clear as day. I have this wide field of view out here and I'm not focused in on just one reticle and then one ring around the target, which is pretty neat, right? So I can go from him, cool, open over here. Get that reload going here. Yep, so if I go straight from the ACOG for something like that, I'm, again, I'm focusing, especially at something at close range, I'm focusing on the reticle, I'm trying to find the target, you know, but moving it over here makes life a whole lot easier. Versus going to the ACOG. Definitely a lot easier going to that red dot and that transition there. So I personally am definitely a fan of throwing on a 45 degree offset. And the one I have specifically here, T-Rex Arms, Lucas Aimbachen. Yeah, you guys need to look him up if you don't know who he is. Running some pretty fast stuff and great equipment, but there's also other mounts out there. We have on our site like the Weaver Picatinny mount, and it's a 45 degree offset for a Picatinny. So if you're running something like a Vortex Venom or Viper, or even an RMR that has a Picatinny mount, and you don't want just a specific mount for the optic that you're running, you can get a 45 degree offset Picatinny. Pretty cool, right? Man, that is fun, way too much fun. So yeah, uh, the biggest thing about it though is a lot of people might not feel comfortable 
running with optics and red dots already is something that you kind of have to get used to, right? For instance, me, I because of that short eye relief and I'm still wanting to have iron sights on my gun, uh, I have to have my stock all the way in. Now granted, I'm waiting on a better mounting system for my ACOG here that's gonna set it back a little bit further, so that way I can get a more comfortable length of pull on my stock, but I am having to run it pretty close as you guys can tell right here. And so that might be something that a lot of people have to get used to. I know whenever I transition over to my 308 over here, which I will do, the eye relief on my Leupold, <laughs> I'm pretty much going from about two inches on the ACOG to almost four inches on this guy here, right? Right here is where I have no scope shadow and I'm comfortable with it, right? What I like about having such a longer eye relief is the fact that, well, I have a wider field of view. I'm not so focused on just the scope itself or the reticle, which is nice. Now on this guy, I do like running backup sights wherever I can, right? You never know if your optic might fail, things like that. So I just got some of the Magpul and Bus Pros uh, that are 45 degree offset. So it's easy enough for me to still to still go ahead and engage a target for precision or distance and then quickly switch. Wherever need be. Whew, that's a gassy boy with that <laughs> suppressor on there. I think I need to tone it down. Do have an adjustable gas block on here, so that would help, right? But anyway, they're a lot of fun, guys. Offsets are a lot of fun, but they do take some practice and training with, right? Being able to pick up the reticle, being able to pick up the actual iron sights, it takes practice and getting used to, right? Now let's say, for instance, I am, go ahead and clear this guy really quick. Safety first, right guys? Now let's say I'm a left-handed shooter. How does that work for me and maybe running it lefty? Well, good question, let's check it out and see. So I still have my ACOG set up, still have my RMR set up, but if I do wanna go left-handed here, easy enough, definitely have my ACOG set up and I still have my red dot set up. Let's try it here. Go for precision. Definitely takes a little bit of practice, obviously, but you get there. And so it's still easy to do, even though I have it set off to the 45 degree on the right-hand side of the firearm. So even if you are a lefty, this could still work for you if you had to you know, pick up my rifle and use it. Naturally, you could just flip the guy around and it's gonna work just fine for all the left-handed shooters out there. So the argument really is, guys, does the ACOG still have a home in the modern world of LPVOs. I saw a couple of you guys down in the comment section, I don't remember who it was, but somebody said ACOG equals obsolete once the LPVO became a factor or something archaic or it was something along those lines, which I thought was kind of funny, but LPVOs are definitely nice. However, the ones that I'm familiar with do add a little bit more weight to them, right? They're a little bit heavier, obviously a little bit more expensive, but ACOG ain't cheap either. So there's a lot of uh, affordable options out there as far as an LPVO goes as well. And I do like them. Apparently the United States Army likes them quite a bit because it looks like SIG just won the new contract to replace the Trijicon ACOG with LPVOs. So in the future, we might be seeing that. I'm in the Marine Reserves. I will never see that, but a lot of you army guys out there who uh you might be seeing some pretty cool stuff coming your way and i would love to hear from you guys about it i don't know specifically which optic it is that sig won the contract with but uh, i think it's a one to six that's pretty cool and when you think about it you got again going from a one power <laughs> pretty much my red dot in this case right and then to a four power but now the lpvo that it looks like the army is going with is a one power two six and you don't have two optics you're having to keep up with right so if this guy was battery powered and it didn't have the fiber optic on it or tritium for the nighttime use then that would be two batteries i'd have to keep up with instead of just the one on the rmr granted there are other battery or battery less options out there for the rmr and all but most of those have a much larger reticle so you're not not getting as precise but then again if you're just doing cqb type stuff not really that big of a deal right yeah that's that's a fun one again just going back and forth back and forth making sure you're able to pick up the reticle get comfortable to that muscle memory and everything else and then just run with it good stuff there we go 
Nice, all right. I think that's enough about magnified optics and offsets. I wanna hear from you guys down in the comment section. What do you think works best? Do you want to go LPVO or do you like having just a standard non-adjustable magnified optic with the offset? I'm curious to hear from you guys. Last thing I wanna talk about is our current giveaway. Guys, this is the FN SCAR 762 NATO battle rifle. I don't have any rounds in it, that sucks. But uh, anyway, this guy is a heck of a lot of fun. It's, it's iconic, you guys love it. You love it when we do SCAR gives away, giveaways, and especially when it's the 50 shades of FDE. You got the tactical UGG boot on it, that's an adjustable length of pool and adjustable comb height. You've got a holographic sight by Vortex on it. This is the UH-1 holographic. Oh, it is awesome. Also adjustable gas block for, you know, fun things. I did go ahead and decide to throw a vertical grip on it because, well, I prefer shooting it with a grip versus without. So able to go ahead and get a nice good grip on this guy, help manage that recoil on it, which is already easily, easy to manage, mainly because of this three chamber brake right up front that FN has on it. And ultimately the, the, <laughs> the piston driven system is a pretty light recoiling one for the 7.62 NATO. So yeah, FN did a great job at this guy other than the reciprocating charging handle, but we all know my disgust with that. But anyway, that's okay. Still a great rifle and you can get your entries in at classicfirearms.com. Hit that top banner. You'll see me trying to look cool with this rifle here. And then it'll take you to a webpage that shows you all the different links to get your entries. And uh, the code word for an extra 400 entries, is a boot. It's boot, B-O-O-T, for obvious reasons, all right? God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.